guys, I'm just another engineer, and welcome to the beginning of my construction of the Scrap Mechanic computer. Now, I've been thinking a little bit about a name for it, despite the fact that I literally have not started. This is the world I'm going to build it in. Um, but I've already named it, and it is going to be called the Turbo Snail, because it's going to be fast for a Scrap Mechanic computer, maybe, but terribly slow for a real computer, because, you know, the tick limit of 40 ticks. So, to start off with this computer, um, when I'm building computers I usually like to start off with the memory because a computer is just something that manipulates data or data um, and you know if you don't have a way of storing that data or data there's no point in having the computer. So, let's start off with the registers slash memory cells. So I'm going to do a little bit of a demonstration on how to build one, and then I'm going to build a more compact version that we're actually going to use. So to start off, as I've said in my logic tutorials, um, we are going to be using exclusive or memory. And so I'll demonstrate using four bits right here. And now I'm using exclusive or memory because it's a lot faster. Um, it is going to be kind of annoying to try and line things up, especially since I have not done exclusive or memory yet, but I'm willing to try and learn that. So, starting off right here, we have four bits. I'm just going to wire them up, as you do in a triangle, if these were laid out in such a shape. Just like that. Now, the thing with these is that um, they need a one-tick input. And help if I wired it. And when you do give that one tick input, it toggles like that. So if you hold it down, it starts flashing a whole bunch, and you have to get the tick just right for it to work properly. So everything has to be done either by machine or with a spud gun and a button. Otherwise, it will not work. So here we have our first four bits. Now. For the registers, we're going to want, or sorry, not for the registers, for the, um, what is it, the task counter, we're going to want to be able to increment this. So we're going to want to be able to go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and so on, so that we know where we're going. So, to do that, put down four AND gates here, put down another gate for the input, and this is a little bit complicated, so let's go over how this is going to happen. If this is a 0, we're going to change it to a 1, and if this is a 1, we're going to change it to a 0. So this is as easy as just simply inputting it. Now, instead of wiring this up three times every time... Um, actually, you know what? I will do that, just because we're only going to be doing this twice, and that will make it a little bit faster overall. So, whenever we hit the input... Wrong one. Whenever we hit the input, okay, wire it up. We want this to flip. Because if you look in the pattern, it's 0, 1, 2, 3. This always toggles. So it's a 0 now, it's a 1 now, it's a 0, and it's a 1. So it's always going to be either on or off, depending on the last sequence, and just toggling it from that. So, for the second one, it's like this, but it will only switch on if you press the button and the previous one is on. So right now, I've added one. This doesn't turn on because there was a zero after it, but I press the button, and now this becomes a one, and this turns off. So, we don't have to turn this off because it will do it by itself, but we take this, we say if the button is pressed, and this has been, um, or this is on, then we toggle like that. Now we just do it for, we do it the exact same for everything else because it just scales up, but this time we need to check that everything after it is also on. And then we'll do it for the fourth one right there. up, and there we go. And then when it gets to the end, it cycles over. 
So, we have a way of incrementing this, but if you ever want to decrement it, I don't think I'm going to really use it too much in my computer, but it's best to have it. Uh, it's a pretty simple system. It's just this, but kind of inverted. So we'll have our input, and you actually kind of need two input blocks. One input block, and then another one to invert it. Now, the reason why we have two input blocks is because when you put this down, let's say you were trying to do it with a button, um, when you put it down, this is supposed to be constantly on, except for if you push the button, but if you don't have anything wired into it, it's off until, oh, this isn't connected, until, uh, oh, this is annoying, until you connect it up. So, we need to have a second input right there just to make that sure that it's always on. And now we just hit this, and that works. Uh, it is a tiny bit slower, but again, I doubt I'm going to use this system. Always just good to have it. So now we need a bunch of logic gates here. And now the way that this works is a little bit interesting. We're going to set these to NOR. Now let's take a look again at how a NOR gate works. It's the same thing as an OR gate, but the out... Gosh, I hate this. It's the same thing as a NOR gate, but the output is inverted. So it's a NOR gate with a NOT gate in front of it. So we do NOR. If either one of them is on, then it turns off. So let's look at how this works. If we have a line of three right there, and we want to decrement it, the first one is always going to toggle. It's going to be like that for every single one. But we told this to toggle, and it didn't because of the fact that, or we told this to toggle, and the second place didn't toggle because this was already on. And if we look at what that means right here, we pushed the button, and this was on. So when we push the button, uh, let's actually do this with switches, when the button is off, it is all, or when we're not pushing anything, the input is always a 1. So this is always a 1. And if we turn it off, I set that to the wrong thing. So this is its default state. If we toggle it, then this turns on, and then again it turns off. But instead, if that bit was already on, so that rep that's represented by this, if we turn it off, it doesn't switch, which is what we want, because if this is already if this is already on, when we remove it, we don't want to get rid of this. So that's how you do this, and it scales up. So we just do the exact same thing. So let's just start by wiring all of these in. We take this, right to the inputs of that. Um Yeah, that's how we do it. <laughs> um, now we take this, bring it into there, and put it on. Then we take the next two. So remember, both of these have to be off for this for the uh, condition to be satisfied. And then this turns off, and then it will give a pulse to the next one to turn it off. Um, so we do this. There we go. And then, same thing for the last one, right here. So now we should have a decrementing system right there. There we go. So that works perfectly fine. Now, if we want to reset this, um, there is no easy way of doing this like you do with... Um, nor nor or for example um let's see nor nor or so with nor nor or you're always going to have an on bit and an off bit so you'll have set and you'll have reset uh, so you'll have set and you'll have reset so it's always going to be reset on this one button 
for this, you have to toggle it. So, the logic we're going to check for is if, uh, get this the right way around, if this is on and the reset button has been pushed, so this is going to be a reset button, the reset button has been pushed and the bit is on, then give it a pulse to turn it off. If this is off and this is already on, then it won't uh, reset it because you're not asking it to reset. And if you push the reset button and the bit is already off, then it won't uh, give it a tick because it's already off and otherwise it would turn itself on. So we wire it into these. And we take an input from the one below just like this. So now we need to tell it to toggle itself, but since it's taking an input from the bit, we can't wire it back in, so we need to add an OR gate right here. I'll just put it as an OR gate because it's a little bit easier. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I might use this as an input for other things. Um, actually, I don't think uh, that's how it works. So. You know, it, it doesn't matter what logic gate these are, because it only has one input, but now we can add these in. This is going to take a little bit of time. Alright, there we go. So, if we get ourselves these buttons back, this should work now, so if we reset and reset it that works just a random number it works so the last thing that we want to do is to be able to set the address um, this is going to be useful in both uh, memory and task counters because of course memory you want to be able to set it to something specific you don't want to increment and decrement it and also if you want to make a jump command then you can do that with the registers so here's what we are going to do we have ourselves um, the inputs like this now I've laid it out like this because we do need a delay and then um, yeah, right here are these switches and then these are all connected, so it's basically just a one tick delay. And now, uh, we'll, we'll see why that's important later. We connect these guys up. This is our toggle on. Now, when we are trying to set a bit, if it's like this and it's already on, we do not want these to pulse if it's already on. Um, or if this is already on and we want it to be on, we don't want to send a pulse. So, in instead, um, what we're going to do is we're going to reset this. So, we're going to clear out the board, and then we're going to write in this. So, uh, to clear it, pretty sure we go uh, right into there. Okay. And then this goes into, uh, actually, you know what, let's use this, because I'm pretty sure we need an even bigger delay now. This may not work, because this isn't exactly how I did it when preparing, uh, so let's just do this for test sakes, so every bit will be tested, every combination will be tested. And... No. That does not work. Okay, we need more delay. How am I gonna do that? Alright, so we'll just add some timers so that we can get this delay exactly right. Uh, so this should be... Oh, this should be the exact same as it was before. So that's wrong. If we set all of these to one tick, 
then it's going to be one tick for the input processing time plus one tick of the delay, so that is still not enough. Uh, oh wait, I didn't reconnect this. Um, okay, yeah, so we need another tick like this. Again, it is still not... Why are you not cooperating? Do we need another... Another one, really? How on earth is this still broken? Oh! This is, this is an AND gate. We need an OR gate. That makes sense. Yeah, there we go. So now we can probably take this down to one. Oops. Alright. Yeah, that works. And just to make sure, we did zero and that wouldn't work. Okay. So the reason why I'm doing timers, or I guess it doesn't matter because you could just do two to do delays. Um, but, I mean, you know, timers take up two spaces, and for variety's sakes, we might as well do that. So now, this is a fully functioning memory. We have reset, or sorry, not memory, um, just, or, well, I guess it is memory that could be used for other incrementing purposes. So, we have reset, we have increment, we have decrement, and we have set. Now, the only thing that's left is taking the output, or at least I'm going to uh, color these things now. So, color it, and then I'll build it in a compacted version over a time lapse, hopefully, if I remember to do that. Uh, so, basically, we just paint absolutely everything black. Uh, there's going to be some guys in the middle, which I'll make sure that I get when I'm doing the actual thing. Just for thoroughness. We paint everything black. We're going to have our white inputs right here. Uh, dark red for reset. Dark green for a specific input. Light green for increment. Dark red for... Or sorry, light red for increment... Or decrement. Oh boy then blue for output. So that is the miniature version, the 4-bit. Um, I'm probably going to make this a 16-bit thing, because um, I want my computer to be 16 bits, and I know in real computers you use 8 bits for storage, but you know we need, we need this thing to go as fast as possible. I don't care about added complexity, I care about speed. Um, or at least I don't know if that's the reason why we do 8-bits in real computers. Either that, or they actually don't do 8-bits. Either way, I'm going to do this really quickly in a time-lapse, so enjoy.
finally, after what was probably way too much footage, uh, probably about 45 minutes, at my guess, uh, this is done. It works, I think. Uh, I obviously couldn't test the entire thing, otherwise I would die of old age a third time by cycling through every single one of these, but I know for sure that the first eight bits of the um, incrementing and decrementing work on this, probably never going to have to go any higher than that, because if I have more memory addresses than 256, it's probably going to break the game, so I'm not too concerned about that. Uh, but yeah, this works, and I have saved it um, to um, Turbo Slug Memory Module. Um, and I'll just do 16 bits. Uh, no, bits is with lowercase b. Okay, there we go. So that is now saved. So. There's that. <laughs> it works. So that's all I'm going to do for this episode because I've been doing a lot of work on this and also a pretty big time lapse. A lot of footage. So I won't bar bore you guys with even more. I really hate how it does this. It thinks it's like survival and it puts the blocks in your inventory. Yeah, there we go. This is the first episode of building the turbo slug. The, uh, or turbo snail. Now I don't remember what I called it. I'm going to have to go back and look at what I named it. But Turbo Slug or Turbo Snail, it's probably Turbo Snail. Um, good thing they both start with an S. Yeah, there we go. Memory done. So I will see you guys next episode. Goodbye.